Welcome to Last Word on Football for the 12th of January 2024, where I give you all the transfer news with none of the guff. So, starting off, Pep Guardiola is refusing to discuss a move for Calvin Phillips. This is weirdly phrased, I admit, but it's Guardiola basically in a press conference was asked about Calvin Phillips moving away and just stayed scum. Didn't want to talk about it, and I completely understand that. He says he's still their player, so he'll still be treated that way. And that completely makes sense, even though he went to watch a Leeds United match at Elland Road the other week and hasn't been a significant part of the squad ever. Let's be honest, Calvin Phillips is on the way out, but Guardiola just doesn't want to talk about it yet. Outside of that, at the other side of Manchester, Man United are still tracking a move for a striker. In this case, it's considering Brobby at Ajax. Brobby is a fast, effective, clinical centre-forward, and I think, if I remember right, he's still fairly young. I'm going to have a very quick look, just to make sure I've got my facts right. There we go, he's still 22 years old, so has a lot of growing to do, and Man United could be a horrendous place for a wonder kid to try and grow into a good footballer. This is, in the kindest way possible, a very Ten Hag signing. Someone at Ajax, someone with a good amount of potential, someone young, someone that worked for him in the past and might not work for him at Manchester United, looking at you, Anthony, and the way that that completely fell apart. Ah, oh, the Beyblade does his best. Outside of Manchester, all the way down in London, Chelsea are going through some major loan department departures at the moment, and these are fairly significant, I think, to the club going forwards. David Atra Fafana has gone to Burnley, and I think that's a very good signing for Burnley because Fafana has shown that he can be a good finisher at times, and that's something that Burnley are quite desperately lacking at the moment. And someone that was at Burnley last season, Ian Matson, has found his way to Dortmund. He's joining Jaden Sancho over there and will provide a very creative left-back presence on the side of Borussia Dortmund. For some reason, I was going to say defence again, but I don't like repeating words. It's quite bad. Uh, in terms of Chelsea, it's not just players that are going out, it's players coming in as well. Todd Bowley wants Evan Ferguson at Brighton. That one's just funny. That's not very likely, is it? You'd think that Chelsea would have learned by this point that they can't just keep going back to the Brighton well and get ripped off time after time after time. How's £50 million Mark Kukurea going for you? How's £100 million Moise Caicedo going for you? If they were to sell Evan Ferguson, he's a very young striker that is homegrown and very clearly incredibly talented. It would cost a hell of a lot of money, and that is money that I don't think Chelsea have the FFP room to do. If they were to try it, good God, it'd be over £100 million. I have zero doubt about that. 150 perhaps could be a record for someone sold from the British Isles. It's not a good idea. Don't do it, Chelsea. That would be a very bad call. Anyway. Outside of those clubs, we're going a little bit further north. We are going to Newcastle, where Joe Linton is out, and that further harms the Newcastle midfielder beyond what could be expected. Tonali isn't there. Joe Linton isn't there. Bruno Gimaraes is one of the only remaining senior quality midfielders they've got. They've got Longstaff, I guess. They've got, is it Miley they got from Chelsea? But outside of that, they're really deeply struggling, and I think this could feasibly lead to a move for Calvin Phillips. Ah, you see, we're doing a little little hop back to the start of the video. Calvin Phillips is likely to make a move away from Manchester City this January, and I think a loan to Newcastle makes perfect sense. It's a side where they need holding midfielders, they need someone that can creatively pass, and Calvin Phillips can do both of those if he has the minutes. He's currently not match fit, but that's because he's not played under Guardiola, because Guardiola needs one defensive midfielder, and that is Rodri. Anyway... Going to do a new segment now. I'm going to go through Premier League predictions for the entire weekend ahead. And spoilers, this is a very, very weird trend that you'll notice in all of my predictions. First up, I've gone a Luton 2-1 win over Burnley. I think Burnley have been struggling a bit recently. And when I've watched Luton, they've impressed me a little bit. I can see something going on there, but we can't be 100% sure. Chelsea are home to Fulham. And Having lost to Middlesbrough in the week, Fulham are not going to be an easy match for Chelsea. I can see a 2-0 victory happening here. And even if Chelsea win, I don't see it being comfortable in the slightest. Newcastle against Manchester City. I'm saying a Man City 3-0 win. Newcastle do not have the midfield to deal with the amount of possession that Manchester City have. Man City potentially have De Bruyne back as well, so that's a lot of chances being created and things are not going to go well for Eddie Howe, in my opinion. Everton are at home to Aston Villa, and I can see that being 3-2 to Villa. Everton are quite good at home. Absolutely agreed with that. However, Aston Villa are looking far too strong this season, and I can see a nice 3-2 win for Emery's men. Deitch will 
put up a fight, though. It's going to be a tight one. And Manchester United at home against Spurs. I can see this being a nice Spurs victory. Spurs not on the best run of form, but neither are Man United. Will Werner get a start? It's a very good question. I want to say probably not, but he could come off the bench. It'd be very funny if he scored a winner against Man United at Old Trafford, though. But ultimately, that was last word on football for the 12th of December. December? January 2024. Uh, let me know what you think about all the stories in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe, and I will see you next time.